The average person gets sick with a cold about three times per year. That means if you're in a group of 10 people, there's about an 8% chance someone is sick and might transfer their cold to you, even if they don't know they have one yet. If you're in a place with 100 people, there's an 80% chance, and if you're in a group of 1,000 random people, there's almost guaranteed to be at least 8 people sick. Most of the time, this doesn't really matter, since you probably just interact with a few people at a time. But when you travel, that's not the case, and a cold isn't your only, or worst, threat. Take a plane, for example. On a plane of about 200 people, at least one person is bound to be sick. But if they cough, everyone won't just get sick. That's because airlines have some techniques of stopping the spread of germs you might have never heard of. But whether they are effective is a whole nother question. And if they aren't, what should you do? Let's start with the airport itself. Even though there are way more people from different places with different germs, airports take basically the same precautions as a regular office building. But here the stakes are a lot higher. One study tested a self-checking kiosk for bacteria and it had over 250,000 individual bacteria living on it per square inch. Meanwhile, a phone in your office might have 25,000, which still isn't good, but the germs are likely more familiar and there are far fewer. Oftentimes, we just think about an airplane as being a risky place for getting sick, but the airport itself is really dirty too. In a plane though, you're a captive audience, and you can't really go away if someone is coughing, which is why a lot of people's fears go way up when they think about them. Seeing these fears, the PR team from airlines like United and Delta promote that they completely replace their air once every two to three minutes and filter the air through a special HEPA filter. This might make you feel safer, but here's what that actually means. The air you breathe on a plane comes half from inside and half from outside. Once the plane is flying, its filtration system will start up and it will take the air from inside the cabin and go out through the vents on the floor. Next, it goes through the pipes to something called a HEPA filter. It's basically a wall of a bunch of mixed up fibers, or in this case trees, and it blocks particles a few different ways. First of all, the gaps between the trees are really small and vary throughout, so if you're just following the road of airflow, big particles will get caught up. Medium sized particles can fit through, but the filter is basically a really windy road. So when the particles get going fast, they lose control on the turns and crash into the side and stop. Finally, the small particles can get through all of that, but since they're so small, all of the air particles passing them make them go back and forth really fast and run off course. This intricate method of stopping air particles is really effective. HEPA filters stop about 99.97% of particles over 0.3 microns, and a micron or micrometer is one millionth the size of a meter. So only the absolute tiniest particles can pass, but that still includes things like a virus such as the flu or coronavirus. The coronavirus is just 0.15 microns, and if it was alone, could pass through HEPA filters, but luckily, most of the time, viruses go through on larger carrier molecules like water. So basically, what all this means is that the filter is pretty good. The clean air then goes into a mixing chamber with air from the outside. This air comes straight from the fans in the engine, which warm it up and compress it so we can breathe. Then it comes out through the vents in the ceiling and that nozzle over your head in a few different air compartments throughout the plane. But this air can also be really dry. Since the air is coming from so high up, there's basically no humidity which makes planes almost as dry as the Atacama Desert in Chile, which is the driest place on Earth. This lack of moisture can break down mucus barriers which are meant to block out bacteria. But the dryness also gets rid of the water droplets that the bacteria could attach to, so in a way, they cancel out. So overall, the air inside of planes is actually really clean and held to similar standards as a hospital. But this didn't stop one man from spreading the SARS virus to 22 other people in 2002. And another person spread the H1N1 virus to 17 people. So if it's not the air, what is it? Well, if you cough or sneeze on a normal day, I bet there wouldn't be 25 people sitting within maybe 10 feet of you. But in a plane, that's normal. And the particles from a cough or sneeze can travel about two rows in every direction. Although the particles won't come back over and over since there's the HEPA filter, the air circulation isn't fast enough to get rid of the bacteria before the closest people get hit. This makes it really easy for viruses to spread with basically no problem. Also, not just looking at the air, planes also have extremely dirty surfaces like tray tables and bathroom doors which are only cleaned once a day and the whole plane is disinfected only once each month. So what do we do? There's a bunch of ways to battle these problems. One 17 year old designed a fin shaped device to put into planes that can basically give each person their own personalized air. Boeing has created a prototype lavatory that can clean itself with UV lights in just three seconds. Another company created a film that you can apply to things like screens that automatically sanitizes itself with an oxidizing reaction. And one study even found just switching the vents from the ceiling to the floor could cut the risk in half. But we're probably never gonna see most of these solutions be put in 
time to place. Airlines already operate on razor-thin margins, and drops in travel can seriously hurt their revenue and lead some into bankruptcy. One extreme example of this is the 2019 coronavirus pandemic, which led air travel to drop by 95%. With these constant threats, it's extremely hard for airlines to actually implement new ways of cleaning, especially when they have fleets of planes that are decades old and new planes cost millions of dollars. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't fly. All it really means is that it's just up to you to not get sick. The most important thing is just watching where your hands go. Most viruses can't just enter your body through the skin, so as long as you keep your hands away from your face and wash them often, you can drastically reduce your chances of getting sick. A mask is also a good way to cut risk, and they can not only prevent you from getting sick, but also you not infecting other people. Even turning on the little vent above your seat can help push particles down and away from your face, and wiping down the surfaces you touch is always a good idea. And even just sitting near the window minimizes your risk by placing you further from other people. So ultimately, although airplanes are trying, it's really up to you to protect yourself. But if you take the right precautions, it's definitely possible to fly the high skies with no colds holding you back.